This is Duke University. I have always been entrepreneurial as a woman leader and am probably somewhat unemployable because I have been focused on making change, making new directions happen, and therefore in many respects building my own, my own organization. So pretty early on I realized that I was not going to fit the mold of any particular corporate culture and it would be best knowing the creative ideas that I had to either start my own businesses or to go into businesses and turn them around where I had a leadership position and a mandate to be able to change the culture and change the direction of the business. And so as a leader in the financial services industry, I ran a company in that area. I ran a healthcare company and I also was CEO of an aerospace distribution company in advanced materials. And in all three of those industries, these were entrepreneurial companies that required creative turnaround strategies uh, and the leadership that I showed in that was very much focused into that industry, into that moment in time. The consulting firm I built in Strategic Alliances, which became the leading one in the world today, was based on an entirely new segment in professional services that had not existed before. So creating that service segment and building that company there were no rules, and I basically did what I thought the customer needed, and it turned out quite well. There are so many stereotypes associated with women, and some of them are good and some of them are bad. Um, I think some of them I wouldn't even want to combat. You know, I, I, you know, one of the most um, difficult things I ever heard was, you know, we had a um, anonymous website where people could make comments to to the firm that I was with, and someone made a comment that that why would you want to be a partner because the women are more masculine than the men. I was horrified by this because women in leadership, at least the women I knew, and you know, women like me, you know, I may, you know, ha sometimes you know, make tough decisions and I may, you know, have to divest a part of the business. I may have to make a tough hiring decision or or exit position or something like that. But that doesn't make me masculine. You know, I spend way too much on my hair, my nails, and my clothes for anyone to consider me masculine. So one of the things that I'm I'm quite passionate about is helping people understand the difference between leadership characteristics and gender characteristics. You know, because you know the, the fact that somebody can be charismatic or be strategic, that's not a gender, you know, specific characteristic. It is a leadership characteristic. So I think that's probably one of the most important things. I, the second thing I would comment on is there is there's all kinds of studies around the biases of women um, and likability. You know, there is an expectation that women are likable, and you can't even get bonus points for being likable, but men, there's not an expectation they're likable, and they get bonus points for being likable. So, you know, we've got a, a disproportionate, you know, equation when we're looking at that. And so it's, so, so one of the things that, that I do is that when you have to take the difficult management positions and do some of the things that are expected of you in leadership, it makes you, in the eyes of some people, not likable. And so I often would compensate for that by baking cookies and doing things to, you know, to show my human side a bit more than most of the men would have needed to do to, to have people find me more approachable. Because there's something inherently scary or intimidating about a woman who's in power. You know, it, they, people are more comfortable with women being, women being in nurturing roles. So I think if you are in a position of leadership or power, you really have to do something to show that you truly are human.